So, today's Flat Earther has a whiteboard and a new model of the Earth. And it's a ring magnet. A ring magnet with a snake. So, uh, let's have a look, shall we? Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Please subscribe. Welcome to the Tomb of Illumination. Here's the old clown who confronts the clown. Well, in this video, I do. And today's clown wants to show the world his ring magnet shaped earth. So let's see if this joker has any idea what he's talking about. Well, I, I can show it on this ring magnet, actually. Uh, there is the weak force and strong force, and there has to be a, a dielectric zone in there. The weak force and strong force have specific meanings in physics, but they have absolutely nothing to do with a simple magnet, let alone a mythical ring-shaped earth magnet, whatever the hell you're bumping your gums about. A magnet just has a north and a south pole, not a strong and a weak force. The magnetic field is just a single entity that extends from one pole to the other. And as for the dielectric zone, that's just a fancy name for an insulator. The only zone in a magnet is the space between the poles where the magnetic field lines exist. And I feel it's worth pointing out the title to his video, the one I'm responding to. A flat earther receives a Nobel Prize for actual physics. Are you taking the piss? Check for yourself if you don't believe me. So you think of magnetism as a dual entity, a dual thing. Yes, science! North and the South Pole. But the funny thing is, with our with their Earth, our flat Earth, it's it's a, it's a dual it's dual again. So we've got the centre north, you've got the tropical gap, and then you have the southern hemisphere, right? Well, you've got the magnetic field coming out of the south going to the Tropic of Capricorn, and the magnetic field coming out of the north going to the Tropic of Cancer. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. A tropical gap. The magnetic field is just a single, giant, unified field that wraps around the entire globe. It does not stop at arbitrary lines on a map that are based on the sun's position. The Earth's magnetic field is generated by the movement of a molten iron core, and it creates a field that extends from the magnetic north pole to the magnetic south pole, not just the tropics, you clown. So to suggest that it's coming out of the north and coming out of the south to a tropic completely ignores how magnetic fields work. It's a closed loop, not two separate ones. And in reality, not that you taught this. Reality. <laughs> yeah, good one. You wouldn't know reality if somebody stapled it to your forehead. This is the North Pole. And this is the North Pole. It's a strong force and a weak force. Oh, so your magnetic flat earth donut has got two North Poles. So I'm just making sure I'm keeping up with him. So overall, they're just calling it North and South, but it's not. It's, it's a lie, a big lie. Because Earth gets broken down to, into a dual system. There's the north, there's the south. The magnetic field comes out of the north and comes around to the south. There's one magnetic field. We, we star trail the, the stars going like this. If you're on one meridian, everyone's on a meridian, north to south. You see your star trail there, and you'll see the, the northern star trail here, right? Brilliant, this guy can't even keep his own nonsense straight. He says it's a dual system and then immediately follows up with it's one magnetic field. So which is it, Chief? Now, while the Earth does have two poles, the magnetic field is a single continuous entity that flows from north to south. It's a closed loop, just like a magnet you'd find on your fridge. And as for your star trail claim, well, that's where it all completely starts to fall apart. Star trails aren't proof of some bizarre dual magnetic system. You moron, they're proof that the Earth rotates on its axis. But you say, you've got north here, and we've got a south here, on the Tropic of Cancer. So there's one magnetic cycle there, and there's another one there. It doesn't quite work like that, because it works on a hole. It comes out of the north, round like that, round there, and back around there. This guy has officially lost the plot. A south on the Tropic of Cancer. That's not how any of this works. The Tropic of Cancer is a line of latitude, a geographic marker, and it has absolutely nothing to do with Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field is a powerful interconnected force that protects us from solar winds, and it looks a lot more like this than whatever he's scribbling on his whiteboard. That's the one way we can tell that we live on a, a flat Earth system like this where the, the, the centre diverges, and 
the southern is expressed. If you look up in the sky, well, you can't look up in the sky, but you can film the, the movement of the sun all year, and it shows this. So if you're in the north looking this way, that's what you're going to get, because that's the north, centre north, northern hemisphere in here. The bigger, wider dispersed is out here. There's the tropical gap, and if you're in the south, you're going to be looking this way, and you're going to see it like this. The Analama, or at least I hope that's how you say it. But it's one of the most beautiful pieces of evidence that the Earth is a sphere orbiting the Sun. And he's trying to use it to prove that his flat magnetic donut Earth nonsense is real. Now the reason the Sun's path appears different from the Northern and Southern Hemispheres is because you're standing on a sphere. From the north, the sun's path is higher in the sky during the summer and lower during winter. And the opposite is true in the south. And this is perfectly explained by spherical geometry, not by some imaginary tropical gap. It's one of the best ways to prove that we live on a rotating globe, not a flat magnetic donor. All, all the energy comes around out of the north. The sun comes out of the south, sorry. Out of the south, southern hemisphere, I should say, south here. And we shouldn't be saying North Pole, South Pole. So we've all been fooled, all lied to. I've got to ask, what are these hemisphere things you keep mentioning? How do you get a hemisphere on a flat disk? The North and the South Poles are not made up. The geographic poles are the two points on the planet's surface where its axis of rotation intersects. Then you've got the magnetic poles, which are the regions where Earth's magnetic field lines enter and exit the planet. They aren't exactly at the geographic poles, but they are very real, and we've been measuring them for centuries. So here's your strong force, and then that weak force around here, okay? Look, we've already established that you have absolutely no clue how magnetism works or reality. Now, you mentioned something about a snake being involved, so let's hear about that. Talking about the serpent, the snake. This is what the magnetic field represents, it's the snake. And there's your figure, there's your infinity symbol, isn't it? Why have I made so few videos about this guy? He's an actual gold mine of ridiculous claims. The idea that a snake or an infinity symbol represents the magnetic field is a level of pseudoscience I didn't even think was possible. The magnetic field isn't some ancient biblical symbol, pal. It's a real measurable physical phenomenon. What is a magnet? What is a plate? What is a field? So it's the flux, the flow of the field, trying to seek equilibrium so you got the strong force in the north strong force in here should we do that again strong force in the north well that's a bit flat strong force in the north tropical gap the dielectric gap okay not Magnetic field does not cross the tropics. Might come in a little bit, but it doesn't cross, especially doesn't cross the, uh, specifically doesn't cross the equator. And there's the southern hemisphere. First off, strong force is a term in particle physics, and it has absolutely nothing to do with magnets. And a dielectric is just an electrical insulator. Stop saying it, you sound like a dick. It is not a gap in a magnetic field. You're just throwing out big words you clearly don't understand to try and sound like you know what you're talking about and you're doing a shit job at it. But this has got to be the most absurd claim he's made, that the magnetic field doesn't cross the tropics or the equator. That's just a flat out lie. What is a field? So it's the magnetic flow of the field and it's only flowing and crossing because uh, we've got a sun. The sun was created, which set everything in motion. What the hell is he talking about now? The Earth's magnetic field isn't created by the sun. It's a completely separate phenomenon. The magnetic field is generated deep within our own planet, in the outer core, which creates a powerful geodynamo effect, essentially turning Earth into a massive, self-sustaining magnet. Uh, why is a globe model impossible? Well, for the same reason. Well, their globe is symmetrical, isn't it? 
No, the Earth isn't perfectly symmetrical. The rotation of the planet causes it to bulge at the equator, which makes it an oblate spheroid, not a perfect sphere. There are also mountains, trenches and various surface features that break up any perfect symmetry. How can it be? It's not. They've, they've ignored magnetism. Magnetism. How does that work? Well, we won't be asking you, that's for sure, because if you've demonstrated anything in your video, it's that you have absolutely zero understanding of magnetism. Big field, small field. Three to two ratio. They're ignoring all that. This claim that symmetry conflicts with a supposed three to ratio of magnetism is just Baseless nonsense. The Earth's magnetic field is powerful and a continuous loop. Its existence is one of the reasons that we know the Earth is a globe and why it works. The only thing that isn't working here is you are logic. Lying. Lie, 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 lie. All the fields come out, spinning around the north and come out around the south. Well, how about this then? Instead of standing there waffling and scribbling crap on a whiteboard, Go out and actually prove that you're right and that we are wrong. I mean, historically, that's always worked out for flat earthers, isn't it? I mean, I, you know, it's just, um, interesting. That is impossible. They've only, they've only, um, they've only put it on a tilt to try, to try and explain this sun and a lemma idea. The analemma isn't some convenient idea to match the tilt. It's the proof of a tilt and our elliptical orbit. There's only one person in this video trying to reverse engineer reality to fit a donut, and it ain't me. I don't need to force a square peg into a round hole, because I've got something that flat earthers will never have, and it's on my side. And do you know what that is? Reality and a boatload of verifiable scientific observations that show I'm right and every flat earther in the world is wrong. You know, so it's tilted away, then oh, you get the faint top part of the analemma. When all along it's the centre Earth has the ecliptic plane that goes flexes like this. It flattens out at equilibrium at this point here, or towards the, there's a secret going on here, and then it starts going up and in for the northern hemisphere, the ecliptic plane. It's the 2D plane up here in creation. Ecliptic plane flexes and the sun follows the flexing magnetic field. Adiel, I thought I'd heard everything. This is next level nonsense. The sun's path has nothing to do with Earth's magnetic field, as I've already said. What you're saying is like saying a car's speed is determined by the colour of its paint. It's just a random, nonsensical connection with no basis in reality. You are completely misrepresenting scientific concepts to fit this bizarre, magnetic, flat Earth donut you've created in your mind. Yeah, get rid of it. It's all wrong anyway. So, don't forget to join me live at 6pm on Sunday for the next episode of the Creaky Blinder Show. Yeah, I've sort of lost count now. <laughs> and remember that from the 24th, I'm moving the show completely onto the second channel. So this will be the last episode on this channel, the main channel. Thank you all for your continued support and for watching my videos. I really, really mean it when I say I could not do this without the support of this amazing community we've managed to build. And uh, I think that's about it for today. See you on Sunday. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. I wonder how flat earthers navigate dating, because as far as I can tell, the only way a flat earther will ever get laid is if they crawl up a chicken's ass and wait. I don't think so, no, 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 I don't think so, no, 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 it's never ever